I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Nitsun Ziv, co-founder and CEO at Ox Security, the first and only end-to-end -end software supply chain security solution that empowers DevSecOps teams with visibility, security, and integrity from modeling and planning through to production. To learn more, visit ox.security. Evolution Equity TV is brought to you by Evolution Equity Partners, an international venture capital investor partnering with exceptional entrepreneurs to develop market-leading cybersecurity and enterprise software companies. To learn more, visit evolutionequity.com. Nitsan, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, pleasure meeting you. So before we get started, our audience loves to hear the backstory, a uh, little bit about the founders of the hottest cybersecurity companies we're following. Uh, Ox Security is definitely one of them. You have a great background coming from Checkpoint Software. Before that, Vanadium. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. So I actually started working in the cybersecurity industry when I was 16 um, in a company named Cytex. Later on, was acquired by Creo, and from here and then, we acquired a few times uh, since. Uh, joined the military service, um, amazing uh, service time, got to, to do a lot of uh, interesting things, BSc and MBA, um, and then started my first company, also in cybersecurity, named Vanadium, uh, where we did uh, EDR way before it, which was uh, EDR. Uh, when things went um, not in the right direction, we joined the check for, Checkpoint, I was uh, for 10 years over there, the vice president of cybersecurity at Checkpoint, doing all the amazing products uh, such as IPS, Sandbox, Endpoint Mobile, and many more, uh, working with really incredible people. So before I ask you about Ox, I have to ask you about 16 years old, like how, how does somebody get started in cyber so young? So there was um, a cybersecurity college and a programming college um, way, way back, and somebody that uh, was in the college with me uh, was actually working at Cytex. And he said, you know, what? it sounds very interesting. I've got a student position. Will you be able to, to take this position? I said, yes, definitely. And uh, one thing led to another. And uh, I simply enjoyed the, the field ever since. Right. Wow. So I'm going to simplify uh, here. Ox Security, you protect the software development lifecycle, uh, something that we follow, but that really hardly explains uh, what your company does. So maybe you can give us a 30,000 foot view on the industry challenge that you address and how Ox Security solves the problem. Yeah, sure. Um, so part of the challenge that we see right now in the market, and it's something that we've experienced uh, as we had to do things like this uh, within Checkpoint, is what we used to call uh, or are calling right now actually the AppSec pyramid of pain. So what it means is usually when somebody starts an AppSec program, they would say, okay, let's buy a few tools, run them, and we should be fine. But what usually happened at the moment in time, they run the tool, they get about 10,000 different findings, and they don't know how to progress. So they would say, okay, let's just try to pilot it on one group and see what happens. And they get back and say, no, this is false positive. This is not connected to the internet. This is true, but it's deprecated. And you get a lot of different reasons why something is not real. So when you need to do it with a few different products, that becomes super hard. So you've got a few pyramids to climb. And then we started seeing new attack vectors like uh, SolarWinds and CodeCov and, and many more attack. And right now you can see at least two per week uh, in the newspaper. Uh, so we said, this is going in the wrong direction, and we should start thinking about how can we disrupt this market and rethink the strategy um, so we'll be able to uh, have people working on a solution actually being able to get to a resolution. So I want to elevate this maybe to, you know, uh, CISOs, possibly even the C-suite in the boardroom. And, and I don't know if we can do that or not. You know, about a decade ago, uh, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security singled out uh, software code and its insecurity is one of the biggest problems, challenges that we have in the cybersecurity industry. Yet, I don't think that message really went mainstream for a lot of people. It's still, you know, sort of a dirty little secret, not so well known. In your opinion, Nitsan, should CISOs, should even possibly C-suite executives, boardroom executives be focused on, on this problem or, or is it too technical for them to understand? Well, I think that the challenge itself is that the market is constantly changing. And in order to understand this market, even just understanding the different domains within, within cybersecurity, it requires a lot of time, attention, reading, catching up. 
I don't think it's something that the board should have the ability or can even have the ability to discuss in details. But what needs to be discussed are the business risks that, uh, that cybersecurity challenges impose to the business. And this is something definitely being discussed in, in boardrooms, uh, especially after major events. And right now we're seeing once or twice a week, so that's a major event uh, with big brands. So it's really about the concern about whether we're doing the right thing, whether you've got the right controls, uh, and what are we doing in order to do that, not the technical details of how we're doing it. So in uh, September of 2022, your company, who we've been following for a while now, raised $34 million. That was a seed round uh, funding, according to TechCrunch. And at the time, they reported that you were looking to double your headcount. I'm curious, uh, what is the money being used for? How, how important was that? Is that a you know, big milestone for the company? Um, yes. Yeah, so we raised um, 34 uh, and we announced on it on, in September timeframe. I think that we, I'm not sure that we doubled yet, but we're definitely on, on track uh, to double uh, in, in the coming months or complete the doubling. We've seen a huge intake in customers. Um, and what we see with customers is that they've got the tools already, but they're struggling to do this and they need a lot of customization. Uh, we are very fortunate to have a great set of customers that constantly talk with us, give us their ideas on how to improve. And it requires a lot of product innovation. Uh, so definitely uh, it's something that uh, we're going to use a lot of this money uh, to accelerate the growth right now. So you know Richard Seewald from Evolution Equity Partners. He's been on with us uh, quite a few times talking about a range of topics, and he's uh, very enthusiastic about your company. I'm curious, how did you meet Evolution, and how important is it not just to find investors, but to find the right investors? So the, the simple answer is it's one of the most critical things within the company. I'm very fortunate to have amazing partners uh, from various uh, VCs that are working with us, um, such as Microsoft, uh, Teammate, and Evolution, amazing partners. They, we share with them our current uh, problems that we're trying to tackle, and they are active participants in the discussion, saying, we've seen this, this is a situation. And in a certain time, when we came to the board with um, a suggestion how to tackle things, they actually said, look, you're thinking about it too small you should go and do something big versus what you're trying to figure out. And I think this is what, this has been one of the most influential discussions that we had on the track of the company. So better partners uh, than we've got would really be a challenge. Really amazing people, both on the personal level and uh, in, in the ability to give the right advice. So I'm curious to learn about your customer base and your target market. You know, clearly this is a, a challenge for everybody, whether it's a small business or a large enterprise. Uh, everybody owns software code. The world runs on code. But of course, there's, you know, various levels of expertise and staffing in companies of different sizes. So tell us about maybe any specific industry verticals uh, that you focus on and also, you know, sizes of the organization. Is this just for very large enterprises and mid-market companies or would this be for companies of all sizes? So I'd, I'd probably categorize the market into three different stages. The first one is those that are just starting their first AppSec program. So over there, you probably find any number between 50 developers on the low end. I think on, on the upper end, it's going to be probably 100, 200 developers. These are the guys that don't have any tools. Maybe they've played with some open source before, but it is unstructured. The moment that it gets the first structure, is when you get the first application security guy within the company and he's saying, no, we, now we need to do some sorting and, and so on. The second stage is after you already have the first AppSec um, and you're saying, okay, now we need to add a few different categories to protect from the open source risks and from the posture risk of the Git and from code issues and API. And then you've got a broad scope of people trying to get their portfolio in order. So they, they will be buying more and more tools, usually from different vendors. So as they do that, they're trying to now make sense of what they actually have, because now they've got a few pyramid of pains that they need to climb. And once you scale above that number, you find the guys that are already saying, OK, now we have the right tools in place, but we can't drive the results that we wanted. So the original plan that we 
uh, got into this uh, this risk or this uh, track into to say we want to secure the object, they can't get to the result. And then they're trying to figure out how do I focus on the right things? How do I find the right kill chain that really can hurt us? And instead of just looking on noise, they're saying, okay, what are the insights that we need to discuss? And this is where you start going in the discussion uh, upper in the organization towards the sea level. So historically, a lot of us in the industry would say that programmers are not necessarily security experts. I hope that we've, you know, moved in a direction where at least uh, there's a much higher uh, awareness. How do you view the state of the market in general? Do you think that most uh, software developers these days have a greater awareness than they did maybe a decade ago of, you know, just how important it is to bake security into that development? Um, I'd, I'd probably say that we've got a different view on, on this. So developers in the modern world, they've got challenges across the board. It is reliability, scaling, uh, accuracy, bugs, uh, so different, so many different problems. Security is just one aspect that they need to understand. Now, they can't be experts in scaling and cloud and native services and SaaS. It, it is impossible for everybody to get to know such a huge um, data or amount of uh, information to consume. So when you're looking, for example, on uh, specific exploits that uh, are out there, out there right now. Let's say Log4j is a good example. You'll probably see that the code that is vulnerable has been there for a long period of time before it was discovered. Now, this is being used by thousands of developers worldwide. Nobody noticed it. So asking developers to actually understand the details of security, I think this is something that is a request that is not logical. They cannot do that. They need guidance, they need help, they need somebody to monitor this. And even though they've got education and awareness, it is really, really hard to spot those issues. Sometimes they don't even know what to look for. So definitely education, yes. Are they able to do detection by themselves? Not so much. So before we let you go, Nitsan, uh, talk to us about 2023, maybe even uh, 2024. What's coming? What should we expect out of Vox Security? Oh, okay. So... Um, one thing that we are going to release in the coming weeks is a new framework that we call OSCAR, which is the Open Software Supply Chain Security Reference, which is trying to map all the attack frameworks and attack tactics out there into a single model, where somebody is going to do an assessment whether their software security uh, supply chain is secure, they would have some kind of a reference to actually work with and understand where are they versus the things in the industry. Right now, what we're seeing is that everybody is trying to say, I'll take some information from here and some from the newspaper and some from things that I heard from friends, and they will try to build the map of reality as they see it. And right now, there is really a missing piece of the puzzle saying, how does the landscape look like? What are the tactics? What should I be aware of? And if I'm looking on a great model that we really like, uh, it is the MITRE Tech Framework. And we try to take something that is more with an operational nature and try to bring it into the software supply chain that we currently couldn't find any map that would help us look on this and provide it to everybody. So this is something that is um, going to be released very soon. So this is something that we're working with about uh, 20 different companies worldwide that uh, are contributing to this endeavor. Well, Nitsan, we appreciate you coming on with us. SOC Security is focused on a, a critical uh, solution that the industry really needs. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on you, and hopefully uh, later in the year you'll come back on. I wish so. All right. Thank you, Nitsan. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Joining us today was Nitsan Ziv, co-founder and CEO at Ox Security. Evolution Equity TV is sponsored by Evolution Equity Partners, an international venture capital investor partnering with exceptional entrepreneurs to develop market-leading cybersecurity and enterprise software companies. Visit evolutionequity.com to learn more. You can keep up with all of our media at cybercrimemagazine.com.